as a professional forester and a practicing forester, I have the, the forest reserve program. I hold it in high regard. I, I think it's the opportunity for individual families to get involved in growing trees and have their own tree farm. And they might have a piece of property where they might live on it, or it might be a piece of property that they only use for recreation purposes, or it might even be a property that they just use for investment purposes. But it gives those people an opportunity to, to go out on their timber stand or go out on their tree farm and do some work if they want to do it and, and watch these trees grow. I'm standing here in a, in a plantation that's now about six years old. And uh, it's a plantation of both Douglas fir and western red cedar. It was planted in 2005 with two-year-old trees. It's not through growing this season yet. Some of the trees are as much as seven or eight feet tall. And there's about a 50-50 mix of Douglas fir and cedar both. The trees have to have open sunlight and mineral soil and space to grow. That's what they need. And, and so you have to give them some space to grow. They can't com all be competing for the same amount of nutrients in the soil. They can't all be competing for the same amount of sunlight. They have to have an adequate amount of that to grow well. So. What you might do in a young plantation like this would be entirely different than what you might do from a management standpoint in an older plantation. If we go back to that 20-year-old stand back there, then the management activities would be entirely different. You, would, you might prune some of those trees so that in the future you would have not free wood. You might thin some of those trees in a pre-commercial thinning or a commercial thinning somewhere along the line. And eventually you get to the point where you get to this stand over here that's 75 years old. And it's pretty well can take care of itself now. It doesn't take a lot of management to take care of that. And one of the things about forest management is, is the landowner can be as passive or as active as he wants to be. And you kind of get out of it what you put into it. It's no different than a lot of other investments. The more work you do, the more you put into it, the better the results in the long run. Very few properties are so homogeneous that they all have trees of one size or one age, where the soils are all exactly the same, where there's, the terrain is all exactly the same. But in, on most properties, there's a variety of these things. So a forest management plan is designed to point out these changes and to give the landowner some, some, some guidelines and recommendations as to what they might do to make these trees grow better. You know, it takes just as long to, to grow a poor tree as it does a, a good tree. And so you might as well be growing good trees. Believe it or not, both of these sections of wood came from 15-year-old trees. This tree was in a stand where there was no management taking place. It's about three inches in diameter, 15 years old. It was crowded. It was crowded out by other trees. It would have a hard time competing with other trees. This tree here, same age, but it's about 12 inches in diameter. It grew fast because it had optimum light. It had optimum soil moisture. It had optimum nutrients. And it, it grew in a managed timber stand but that gave it this opportunity. So that's a, a glaring example of what forest management can do as far as, as producing more wood on a per acre basis. You don't need a lot of sophisticated tools to do what we're doing. You don't even really need a chainsaw. I work out in young plantations like this. I use a pair of loppers. Let me set this down. Sometimes I cut out stuff with loppers. Pretty hard to get hurt with those. I use a machete. It takes a little more experience to use a machete. I wear a pair of gloves a lot. I have an increment bore that I can bore trees with to see how fast they're growing. I have a, I have a diameter tape that I use to measure the diameter. It's calibrated to measure the diameter of the tree, not the circumference of the tree.
I have an abney chronometer, which I use to measure heights. It's a simple little tool that you can look in and measure out a certain distance from a tree and look in and measure the height of the tree. You can get all kinds of flagging, a different colored flagging. I think they make flagging about every color there is. And that's really about all you need. And uh, oh, I guess the last thing you need is just a little bit of energy to go out and do some work. Take the family out. Take the kids out. They'll get used to it. They'll love it. These older trees get a little harder to bore because they're still putting on a lot of volume, but they're putting on volume on a distributed over a much larger area. So obviously the ear rings are going to be a little closer together than they would if it was a young tree. I wet it because I can then see the ear rings a lot easier. And you can count each individual ear all the way back. In fact, back here we were almost at the center of the tree. I'll pick my diameter tape and we'll It's uh, this tree is 26 and a half inches in diameter. So if you looked at a volume table for Douglas fir, you'd find this tree has probably got very close to a thousand, a thousand board feet in it. One board foot is a board 12 inches long, 12 inches wide, and one inch thick. If you see a logging truck go down the road, it's got generally four to five thousand board feet of wood on the on the truck. It takes maybe eight to ten thousand board feet of wood cut up in different forms to build a house. So every time you see a tree like that it'll take about eight to ten of those trees to, to build a house. Depending on the size of the house of course but the average house. The next thing that's going to happen here is there's going to be a harvest here and when there's a harvest here it'll generate a considerable amount of income. I would guess that the income could be anywhere from Twenty to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per acre to the landowner in a stand like this. Uh, then you would start over. You start planting some more trees. You start the whole process again. It's a continual process. If you if you take care of them, they'll grow well, you know, and they'll grow for the next generation and your grandchildren and their grandchildren, and they'll just keep going forever.